In today's video, I'll show how I use some easy macro and flash techniques to get a dramatic shot at home like this. So our subject is actually this little blueberry, which I have already treated very well by spearing it on a sewing needle. Now already it might be quite a nice macro shot, just a close up on the fruit itself. Might be the sort of thing that you might see in a stock image library, but I wanna make it a little bit more interesting by adding in some water splashes. This is a really fun project to try at home and it's great as a learning tool because it involves all these different techniques. It involves close focusing with a macro lens. It involves freezing the action with light and it involves some Photoshop work too. So it's got all these different elements that you need to consider. So that means that at the end of it, you've come out with hopefully quite a cool shot and you've learned some really, really great techniques that you can put to use in other shots. So let's actually just take a look at the setup that we've got here. So firstly, of course, we have our blueberry itself. And as I mentioned, I have speared it on this little needle, which I've put into just some uh, white tack and I've just put it on this upturned um, little flower pot thing. So basically it elevates it and allows me to isolate it in the scene, as you can see on the back of camera here. But of course, because I'm gonna be throwing quite a bit of water at our blueberry, I have put some towels down underneath our setup just to make sure that, you know, that all gets cleaned up. Now I'm gonna be lighting this with my Godox AD600 Pro. This is one of my bigger studio lights. And I've just got a reflector dish with a grid on the front. The grid is just to help stop uh, the light spreading out too much. I don't want it hitting the background. What I want is a shot of the blueberry isolated by itself against a black background. But you don't need a big studio professional strobe for this. You can do this just as well with flash guns or speed lights. But it is one that you'll struggle to do with LED lights or natural lights. The reason being is that they just don't put out enough light or rather they do, but they put it out continuously. And when we're freezing the motion of water and we're freezing those splashes, it's not actually the shutter speed of the camera that is freezing that motion. It's actually the short burst of light coming from our flash. So when you use a flash like this or a flash gun and you use it at a lower power, it puts out such a short pulse of light that it will freeze that motion. So your shutter speed doesn't really matter. Of course, you could try and use a shutter speed of 2,000th of a second with an LED light, but to do that, you're gonna need a very, very powerful LED light in order to actually get enough light into your camera to capture the scene. So as a result, working with freezing motion is always much easier if you're working with flash. But right, enough talking, let's actually take a look at what this looks like in camera. Okay, so you can see that we've got a really nice close-up view on the blueberry itself, but I've not gone completely close in. The reason being is that we need to leave some space around it for these water droplets to actually come in. If we cropped in this much, then there's no room to actually see those splashes. So giving us that extra little bit of space means that we can capture everything we want and then maybe crop in a little bit in post later on. Um, but I want the blueberry to be pretty much in the middle of the frame, but slightly over to one side because we want those splashes to bounce off it really nicely. So I think framing something like this would look pretty good. And then we can manually focus. I'm using my 100 mil macro lens for this. And I want to focus on these tips of the blueberry up here. The, I don't know what you'd call that, but you know, the the eye of the blueberry as it were. And what, what, what we'll probably end up doing is focus stacking as well, taking a shot here and then maybe a couple of other shots on the outside so that the whole blueberry is nice and sharp. But let's just see what this looks like for now. I'm in video mode, so I need to go back to our camera. And I'm gonna be shooting at about F8, 200th of a second and my ISO. I'm gonna keep my ISO about 400th, but I'm just gonna make sure that my, um, uh, my flash trigger is off, and I'm just gonna take a quick shot. And this is great. Basically what we've got is a pretty much black frame. And whenever you're working with flash, whenever I'm doing studio shots, I always wanna make sure that my first image is just completely devoid of any light. The reason being is that that means that I know that only the light that I'm putting out from my flash is going to appear in this scene. Okay, but if I turn my trigger on now, currently got my light set to about a 64th power, um, which is quite low. So hopefully that will be enough. But let's just take that same shot again. And straight away, we can see exactly what that light's doing. If we look at our previous frame, nothing at all. And now I know 
exactly what that flash is doing. And if we zoom in, you can see it's really, it's nice and sharp. The focus is spot on on that top. And actually I do quite like this little bit of fall off in focus towards the front, but I'm probably gonna focus stack that anyway, just to um, make sure that it's all nice and sharp. So now I've got my lighting right. I'm just gonna do a quick test. I've got some water in a little, well, you can see what it is. It's a little spirit measure. And I'm actually just gonna start off by using this pipette just to splash some droplets on top and see what that looks like. So we've got one, at least, with a little bit of splash on it. You can see we've got this nice droplet actually coming down the blueberry itself, and we've got this droplet here falling off, which, again, we've got a nice sort of highlight coming from that flash. But our other ones, I don't think, in fact, I think I only took the one. So, you know, that's not great. What I'm gonna do actually is turn off live view when I'm shooting and I'm gonna shoot in burst mode and hopefully that's gonna allow me to get um, a few more shots each time. Okay, focus hasn't changed. Get that pipette in. Lovely. Fire away, the more shots we get, the more options of splashes we're gonna have. So let's take a look at what we've got. This one here with a nice little tail of water falling off it. Oh yes, some great splashes here. Look at these falling off, these are great. Yeah, definitely working with burst mode is much better. Oh yes, look at this. Beautiful, crisp, pin sharp droplet coming off here. This just catching that flash. Oof, hello. Beautiful, a real crown hitting it there. That's great. Okay, yeah, we've got lots to work with here so far, but I'm gonna keep on doing a few more. So let's get some more water in our pipette and we're gonna do some more splashes. I'm holding a little bit higher up just to try and hopefully increase that splash. Might not have worked, but we can try. So let's take a look through what we've got. We've got a whole range now. Oh, look at this. This splashing coming off there, that's great. Loads of different droplets. So what we're gonna be doing is maybe, for example, let's just take this, I'd be combining, I'd take this um, splash here and I would combine it with maybe some of the droplets from this, you know, I might take this I might take some of these coming down. So what we'll do is load all of these into Lightroom and then decide which drops we want from which image. But before we do, I'm just gonna go in and I'm just going to make sure that I've got a nice couple of focus points on the blueberry, just to make sure that if we do want to focus stack, there's one, I'll go back in, focus this time right on the front. Then, um, then we've got those different focus points to choose from if we do end up focus stacking. But I think I've probably taken quite enough shots, so let's head over into Lightroom and see how we piece these together. Okay, so here we are over in Lightroom and I've imported all of those photos. As you can see, I've done quite a lot. In fact, I've taken 181 photos in total just then. It's because you just get different ones with every shot you take. No one photo is the same. And so the more you take, the more options you will have to put something cool together um, afterwards. So let's just go back up to the top. And what I'm doing now is basically gonna go through and I'm gonna try and choose a variety of different splashes, something that I think might look quite cool. So there's this one, for example, I quite like that these splashes have been a bit closer to the camera and therefore aren't quite as in focus. So I'm just gonna mark that with a one. You know, a lot of the shots, I didn't get the water splash at all. So, you know, they'll eventually be deleted. This one, I like this one coming down here. We'll give that a one. I did like this crown when I took it, but you know it might be a little bit too much because it almost obscures a little bit too much of the blueberry, but let's put that in for now. I might keep that in. This one's a little bit too much. We just got this big, like an arm of water reaching out and I don't really like that quite so much. So, you know, not every splash is a good looking splash that we actually want to include. So that's why it is important to get so many different ones. You know, this one, I quite like this little bit here. So we might include that one. 
So, I mean, I, I love the, the frozen nature of the water as it's been thrown in here, but it is a bit much for the type of shot that we want. When we want a splash, and what we've definitely got is just a body of water that I've thrown over the blueberry. So I don't think this is going to work. Okay, so I've gone through all 181 photos to see which ones have the nicest splashes. So if we go back out now and I just filter based on the one-star shots, that means that everything that we've now got, we've got 16 potential splash images. And I think we've got some really, really good stuff to work with here. So what we do is, first of all, I'm just going to start off by doing a little bit of correction on these because they're a little bit dark and I can just increase an exposure, increase the shadows. Actually, the shadows aren't really doing a lot. A little bit of a boost is just helping actually bring out some of the tones underneath the blueberry here. I think that's everything that I'd want to do just for now. So I'm just going to select all of these, right click on our first one, develop settings, sync settings, synchronize across all of them. So now all of those shots will have the exact same uh, settings applied, which is great, but we've got all of them selected. No, nope. select all. There we go. Right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So here we are over in Photoshop and we've got all our layers lined up. I did realize that I didn't include the focus stack ones, so I have just uh, brought those in as well. I've just called it focus mid and focus front. Um, that's fine, let's just turn those off. So what I wanna do is start with what I would call like my base splash image, one that's a good one to start layering things up on the top. And I think the one that I'm probably gonna use, if I just turn this off until I find it, I think I am going to use this crown one because it's a really dramatic splash. I love the way it's just hitting the side of that blueberry. I think it looks really nice. So let's give this uh, give this one a go as our main one. And I'm just going to rename it crown just so I know which one it is. Uh, the other ones we don't need to rename because it's kind of irrelevant. But I'm going to move that right down to the bottom so that it becomes our base layer. And then we go up and we just turn all of the other ones off like this. So there we go. This then is our base layer. So now basically what we need to do is just go up, turn on our next layer, and we can see, okay, so down here we've got these droplets, we've got these droplets. So what we're gonna do with each layer is change the blending mode to lighten, and what that allows is for anything that's lighter than the previous layer, it will show through over the top. So in this case, you can see that our water droplets, which of course are lighter, are now showing through over the top of the splash. Now it does look messy, and if we look, we can see that those uh, it has moved around, oops, uh, it has obviously moved the blueberry while we've been shooting because um, the uh, needle is in two different positions, but that is fine because what we're actually gonna do is create a layer mask, invert it so that nothing shows, and then we're gonna get our brush, smaller size, make sure it's set to white, ooh, slightly larger size, um, with a higher flow, something around 50%, and we're just gonna paint in those droplets. It doesn't matter that our shooting position has uh, slightly moved because these aren't really attached to anything. So we can just sort of put those in however we want. Actually, it's great because you can just turn the colors back to black. I don't want that top bit. I just want this one right here, this little orb. So now we turn that off and on. We've just brought in those splashes. And we can turn off that mask. You can see how much of the rest of this we've ignored. We've just got these splashes here. And that's what we're gonna do with every single other layer. So we turn this on, see what we've got. We've got a little splash here. We've got one here. I think it might just be this one I might keep. Maybe this one here. So let's just, um, again, change it to lighten blending mode. Put in a mask, invert it. And now we can just paint in, oops, paint with white. This little one here. And where was it? It was up here. There we go, just like that. So as you can see, we're starting to build up a bigger picture. Maybe not sure of this one. I'm gonna keep this one off for now. Oh yeah, these ones, I liked these down here. However, we do have a little bit of lens flare. I think maybe I got a droplet on the um, on the lens and it, it's, it's kind of catching the light a little bit. So that's a shame. Yeah, quite like this and some of these smaller droplets showing a little bit more impact in our shot. I, of course, need to turn that off. So let's turn this on, go back to light and blending mode on it. Same again, we need to create a mask, invert that mask, and then we can just paint with white. 
on some of these droplets around here. Okay, our next one. Mm, you know what? Don't like this one anymore. I don't know why I put this one in. Let's just delete that. So I think just for the purposes of time, I'm just gonna skip ahead because we're basically repeating the same process of looking through, finding the splash we want, and then painting it in. So let's finish off. Okay, so we are now at the point where I have brought in every splash that I want from all these different ones. You can see that some of these masks, it's just a tiny little area. If we turn it off and on, we've just got these two little ones poking out here at the bottom. But what I've also done is brought in those focus points and that's just in the middle of this and on the front. Again, exactly the same techniques, just uh, using these uh, masks and just painting in the little bit that I want. But the last thing that I did that I, that I didn't mention before was that I also took uh, this shot before I did any, um, uh, any water and I've just brought that in as well and I've just lined that up and I've just masked that in at the bottom because without it, we've just got this big water droplet and I'm going to now, show you how I'd get rid of the um, uh, the, the metal spike, the, uh, the needle, um, and having that water droplet in there will just make that a lot more complicated. Now it's going to be much easier. So I really like how this is looking. It's so dynamic. We've got all these drops, these splashes going in. It looks really, really great. So what I'm going to do is um, just for ease now, I'm going to go to layer and flatten image and uh, discard hidden layers and now everything is on one layer much easier to work with so now we can duplicate that layer and let's make the first thing we do getting rid of this uh, this spike and we're gonna do that a couple of ways first of all I'm gonna use the clone stamp tool I'm just gonna to take a reading from over here line this up like that and just paint it in from the other side line it up paint it in we can go back and just do little bits just to even it out so it's less obvious. Okay, now that is done. We can just zoom out ever so slightly. That's the wrong way. <laughs> Fit on screen. Okay, let's do, let's do it this way. Let's get our polygonal lasso tool. I'm just gonna draw around this like this. There we go. And then using the uh, patch tool, we can literally grab that, move it over here, let go and Photoshop has done the rest for us. It's just left one little bit down here, which we can do ourselves again using the clone stamp, get rid of that. But if we look, it's gone, like magic. Isn't that great? Isn't that so easy? So easy to get rid of that thing. There you go, was there before, now it isn't. Um, so now we've just got this, this nice hanging blueberry, almost like we've thrown it up into the air and splashed water at the same time, but we haven't. We had it on a spike. So it's looking really, really good. So I know I've just spent ages going in and painting in all these little droplets, but there are some of them that I just want to actually neaten up and get rid of. I'm just gonna use the spot healing brush. Just these ones that they look a little bit almost yellow. Um, so I think they were maybe catching, maybe catching my overhead light or something. I want the bigger droplets. These, these little tiny ones are a little bit messy. And so just tidying that up a little bit will just give it a much more polished look. I don't want to get rid of all of them, but you know, things like this looks a little weird. We turn that off and on. I think this is looking really, really nice. I'm so pleased with how this has turned out. Um, one thing that I do want to do, because I just feel that this space here is a little empty, I'm going to copy this one from over here. Let's just get the lasso tool, draw around these two, copy, paste, Move it up here. Let's just flip it around so it looks a little bit different. Maybe make it slightly bigger. Just filled in that space a little bit more. This was the one, the one part where we didn't really have any splashes because our splashes were coming down from the top, mostly going either this way or this way. So you know, we just fills that, fill that in just a little bit, and I think that's looking really, really nice overall. Let's merge that down though. As before, there's our after. Just gonna do a couple more little changes, but this time I'm gonna do it in a camera raw filter. This basically brings in the exact same tools you would have in Lightroom. And I'm just gonna up those whites a little bit more. Now clarity is really good for anything like this because look, you can just see how much more crisp all of those water droplets are. 
and indeed on the um, uh, you know the blueberry itself but you don't want to go too far so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint it in using the brush tool yeah 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 I know how to do masking thank you brush new brush much smaller I'm going to lower that feathering something like this and all I'm going to do is paint in clarity so just by painting it in you can see you know we can paint it in just where we want so it's not affecting everything it's not doing anything weird to um, to the blueberry itself we're just getting in that crisp detail on the water it's looking great and that is why using the brush tool in uh, in Lightroom in camera raw like this is much better for your editing look at the difference that that suddenly made looks great looks really good but I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to go back in to our camera raw filter because what we've got I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on Lightroom because of some of the edits that we've done already we've got now this sort of gray halo effect around some of these droplets whereas we want it to be pure black but I don't want anything to appear on the blueberry so I'm going to use another mask this time it's going to be a uh, radial gradient I'm just going to put this in on our blueberry like this but then if you just press X you can invert that mask so now everything wherever we make an edit that will apply to everything except the blueberry which is exactly what we want so if we just uh, now unclick show overlay and we can grab our black slider and we can move look at that up here everything's hazy we can move it all down make sure that our back is dropping to pure black none of that sort of gray haziness but it isn't affecting the blueberry it's exactly what we want perfect so we press ok look at that it's increased that contrast our water droplets stand out off that even more it's looking so so cool um to the i think it might be a little overdone so it's going to bring it down just a touch i think that's okay that's still taking care of our issue but it's slightly less contrasty on the things themselves um i think that's everything i want to do in photoshop so i'm going to press save head on over into lightroom and we just have a little play around i can maybe just increase that exposure slightly maybe increase those shadows I do like that. I'm just going to give an extra little saturation boost so that we get that nice blue of that blueberry coming through a little bit more. And you know what? I think that is everything I want to do. Let's look at our before and our after. Look how dramatic that shot looks. It's this dynamic uh, image of these splashes coming in, these lovely water droplets. They've caught that light beautifully. It looks really, really cool. If we just look at one of our starting shots, you know, it doesn't really look that great. Just one image isn't going to do it. But by combining all of those different shots, by combining the different splashes coming from different angles, what we've done is created a really, really cool looking shot. Um, and I think it's great. And I just, I think I love doing these little experiments at home because every single time I do one, I mean, firstly, I get a really cool shot that I'm pleased with, but I learn another little thing and it just helps refine those skills. So do not think that this is just about getting a shot of a blueberry it's not the blueberry is kind of incidental this is about practicing those skills putting them to good use so that when you've then got a shot that you really want that's really really important to you you can do a much better job than maybe you could have but that does bring me to an end of this video. Um, I really do hope that it's been helpful to see how I would do um, this kind of shot, how I would blend images, how I would work with flash, how I would use that flash to freeze the water, and then how I would piece all of these different pieces together in Photoshop. Um, as I say, I think these are important to do and I really enjoy doing them. Um, but if you've enjoyed seeing it, then do please hit that like button and do consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.